you know, nowadays, all of the information that's important to you from an application standpoint doesn't always come or sit directly in Dynamics 365 all the time. You think about, you know, even like a, a customer support mechanism where maybe you're running a help desk organization or maybe you're running a field service organization. A lot of times the interactions that you have, particularly in today's day and age, you know, they come from things like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. There, there's, there's more and more of that happening outside of the context of the application. Now, what's nice about that is People are talking about you on Twitter. People are talking, you know, interacting with people via LinkedIn. They're doing stuff out on Facebook. They're doing stuff out on social media that does have a direct correlation to what it is that you want to do inside Dynamics 365. And so it's nice if you can think about an aspect of how can I take some of that information, maybe, you know, somebody maybe even making a complaint out on social media and proactively do something with it. Now that's where some of the different frameworks comes into play in regards to Dynamics 365. And so in this particular module what we want to do is, is talk a little bit about you know how does Dynamics 365 talk to these other systems? You know what can I do with the data that's coming from like a Twitter or, or a Facebook or something like that? And one of the key things that we're going to talk a little bit about here is Microsoft social engagement. Now this isn't a social engagement course, but the, the platform that social engagement uses gives you a nice starting and vantage point to be able to surface some social information inside your Dynamics 365 implementation. So we want to understand just what is the, the, the connection point and what how do those different items work together. We also want to look at record creation options, and we're going to look at it in the context of from Dynamics 365 and social engagement. But at the same point in time, I want to expand on that even a little bit more and show you how if you just want to go out and grab stuff from Twitter or you want to grab stuff from other avenues, how you can bring that into the mix. And this will be kind of a, a nice correlation to some of the stuff that we talked about in Module 3 when we were talking about using flow. Because using flow to create records and, and surface information inside Dynamics 365 could create the appropriate activity needed for you to now go out and use some of the automatic record creation and update rules in the application. So we want to just talk a little bit about how that entire process works where you want to automatically create records maybe based upon emails or different social activity things that are taking place outside of the context of Dynamics 365. So really there's, there's three baseline I don't want to necessarily call them applications, but there's three baseline pieces of functionality that are used to extend Dynamics 365 functionality. And those would really be broken down into three subsets. There's the Power Apps concept. And so when you think about Power Apps, think about, you know, the, the ability to be able to create a custom application that not only takes data from Dynamics 365, but also maybe takes data from, you know, an operations module, maybe from AX or, or some other, you know, third-party service, maybe through SharePoint, maybe through Dropbox, something like that, that you want to bring into a singular point of connection and now be able to initiate actions inside one or many of those individual applications. So when you start talking about Power Apps, you're usually talking about a very specific piece of functionality. I want to create a custom application that I can use to track lead generation process for my internal people to give them another way to be able to facilitate that. Or I want to be able to do maybe a custom case management application that I can connect not only to Dynamics 365, but maybe I can push some of the inventory pieces into a third-party application. So you're going to be designing and building basically an application. Now the nice thing about that is it gives you the capabilities to build these applications without actually having to be a developer. Um, it has a drag and drop interface. It has a lot of different modules and elements that you can use to build those. Microsoft Flow, on the other hand, is really around the automation in between what's going to take place between those applications. So if Power Apps is going to connect to these multiple applications and it's going to initiate an action, <clears throat> Flow is generally 
really what's going to take that action into consideration and what's actually going to perform that situation. So it's going to connect to the specific item that you want to work with and it's going to do whatever that automation process is. It's going to send an email to somebody, wait for something to be approved, now it's going to fire it off into another application and facilitate <clears throat> some type of integration within that process. And then all the other option that you have is what's called the common data service. And there's been a lot of talk around the common data service, but really the, the common data service is a, a storage container that allows you to bridge the gap between these applications. So if you have two individual applications that you want to bring together, you can use the common data service as the intermediary between the two items. So I can use the common data service to facilitate that integration as we're moving forward. Now we'll talk about each one of these in a little bit more detail, but let's start with Power Apps as a whole. So. The concept around Power Apps is the ability to go in and create different types of applications. Now, there's different deployment models that you can choose from a Power Apps perspective. You can build kind of web-based applications, so if you want people to be able to access the application via the web, you can make it more of a web-based application. You also can build mobile apps, so if you want it to be displayed on a tablet or if you want it to be run on a mobile phone, you have the capabilities to do that. Now, what's nice about this is it's really the shell framework work that it provides for how you want to work with the item itself. So it's a visual, it brings up kind of an application designer process that allows you to actually create the screens that are going to facilitate the application that you're going to push across. So there's different page elements that get it displayed within the context of the application and then those applications and each one of those items are typically connected to some type of data service. They're either connected to Dynamics 365 or they're connected to the common data data service or maybe a third party application. Now what's nice about these individual situations is as you build these different projects and as you build these different applications, you have the ability to surface only the data that's needed for the subset of whatever that specific functionality is going to be for that particular application. Once the application is built, now I have the ability to share that application out across my organization. So if I have a subset of users that need to use that, I can make it available to you know everybody within the organization if I needed to or I could just target specific people based upon what that job functionality might be and now push it out to those people individually. Now what's nice about this is I just publish the information and then there will be a, basically the application will be hosted and available for people to work with and start consuming outside of normal scenarios. So the designer is kind of neat because the designer is was built very specifically to allow you to create these apps with no code. So you do have the ability to go in and build the specific forms that you want to work with. So you can actually decide what you want the different screens and forms to look like so you get exactly what you're hoping to accomplish. So if you want to have one screen that lists all the different records associated with that specific connection source, you can do that. If you click on one of the those records, you now can create a edit screen. So now you can go in and you can see a specific individualized record and now start modifying that record individually. You also have the capabilities to leverage specific elements inside those applications. So if some of those applications, you know, obviously like mobile phones have cameras, maybe I want to take pictures and I want to be able to upload those pictures and store those pictures inside the application. I would have the ability to connect to those types of services. I can use GPS situations if I want to go ahead and, you know, provide turn by turn recommendations or even just use it as kind of a location based situation to determine where they are. So I take into consideration the type of form factor that they are connecting with and determine what we want to do with from that standpoint. I also can start creating business logic. So I can execute specific actions inside these power apps based upon different business logic that I apply. So if this takes place, this is what I want to do from here. And then the other thing that I can do is if I do have developers on staff, I can actually go in and I can extend those capabilities by going out and adding, you know, just little lines of code here and there to make sure that I can target things specifically based upon what I want to do. So it's a whole leverage mechanism that works across the board for whatever it is that you need to do from a targeted application standpoint. Another element that plays kind of a factor in how these 
applications are going to talk to each other is what's called the common data service. Or you may have heard it referred to as the common data model in the past, but it's recently been kind of rebranded as the common data service. And, and realistically what it is, is it's, it's a cloud storage. So you're going to go out and you're going to create a storage uh, area or linking tables per se that you can use to standardize how you want different elements to talk to each other across applications. So a good, real good example with that would be if you think about like AX, because now that Dynamics 365 has an operations module, a lot of times there's going to be financial information that you're going to bring in and want to integrate as part of the application. Now, AX uses a very different schema in regards to how it stores information inside its tables than a Dynamics 365 based scenario. So you're going to run into scenarios when you try to integrate those two applications together or perform common tasks across applications where you're going to need some element in there to unify the different you know, GUIDs that are associated with those records so you have some way to uniquely identify each one of those options. And that's where the common data service comes into play because the common data service allows you to create kind of a standard schema set that allows you to incorporate elements not only from you know one storage capacity maybe AX and another storage capacity named you know from Dynamics 365 into one linking table that you can now push and receive information from through concepts of automation, whether that's flow or some other methodology that you're working with. Now, the nice thing about this is it's a, it's a very extensible model. So the, the common data service does come out of the box with a standard subset of entities that are already kind of pre-configured with many of the fields and items that you would need to work off of. However, if you need to add additional fields or attributes to these items to facilitate integration with maybe a customized Dynamics 365 environment, it's extensible, so you can go out and build that. Now, there's a couple of different ways that it facilitates that. So there's an organization-based common data service, so there's one that's going to facilitate for your entire organization, and then individual users can create their own common data service if they're trying to create custom, you know, custom apps that are specific to in individualized functionality that they want to work with. More often than not, you're typically going to use the standardized common data service that works for your organization. Now, within that common data service, there are connectors that are automatically built in for interface facing that not only with Power Apps but also Microsoft Flow. So if you wanted to use just Flow as kind of a standalone methodology to be able to provide a way to push and receive data from these two individualized areas, you could do that. Now, the one thing that the Common Data Service doesn't have at this particular moment, um, at the time when these, when these videos were released, was built-in synchronization. So there is a manual process at this point where if I want to take something from AX and push it into the Common Data Service, I have to write a flow or some type of procedure to handle that handoff pr uh, process. Same thing with I want to push from uh, Dynamics 365 into there. I have have to write some type of procedure to handle that and then once it comes into the common data service then I would have to have another procedure that would ultimately push it into the other applications. At some point in time there will be a synchronization option which will keep those two items together and make sure that everything is up to date but that doesn't necessarily exist at this point in time now but it is definitely something that's on the radar and will be coming soon in the future. The final piece to this puzzle is Microsoft Flow. And so Microsoft Flow is a service or it's a cloud-based service that you can use to build more advanced type of scenarios that allow you to connect applications together, or at the very least, create business process flows that will, or business processes that would span across multiple applications. They might include multiple steps, they might include different branches based upon what happens, any number of different commonized situations. So for example, I might have a scenario where somebody tweets something. Based upon what was in that tweet or who tweeted that, I might do something specific within the application. Maybe now I want to go ahead and create a contact 
contact inside Dynamics 365. And now once I've created that contact inside Dynamics 365, maybe I want to send an email off to somebody so I can work with that information. Or ultimately, maybe I want to capture that information for as a tweet. I want to bring it into a SharePoint list. I want somebody to go ahead and receive an email to approve that this person can, you know, we can send information to this person. And now we're going to create a lead inside the application. So if you think about it, even at its kind of core functionality, I'm going to create some type of lead in some, in, in some application. I'm then going to send an email off to somebody, let them know the details of that specific information, wait for that person to approve that process within the context of the application. And now once that's been approved, now I'm going to initiate some type of action inside another application. And now the cool, the cool thing about that is if you think about it in the grand scheme of things, now that I've gone in and I've, I've gone through that process where I've captured the tweet, I've added it to a list somewhere, I've submitted it for approval, I've received approval from that standpoint, I've created the record inside Dynamics 365, now I can have Dynamics 365 uh, business processes come into effect. And now I can have a workflow that would function just like it normally would. This record's been created within the context of Dynamics 365. Now I'm going to do something else. Or maybe I'm going to have a custom action that's going to run based upon a workflow when that record's created. And now we're going to get some of those real-time interaction pieces that we've talked about. So this is where you can really start to build these automation processes across the board and not just isolate your processes inside Dynamics 365 anymore. So from an overview standpoint, that's really what you're doing, is you're, you're building processes that span multiple systems within the application itself. Now, much like you saw when we were going through the Power App overview, Flow has its own visual designer. So there is a designer application that you can go into with Microsoft Flow that allows you to build out these different automations. You define the services that you want to connect to. So if you wanted to connect a flow to you know, SharePoint or to Dropbox or to Twitter or, or some other methodology, you pick the services that are going to work on those individual situations. Now what's nice about these, these different flow concepts is depending upon what you're, you know, what you're wanting to do, they can be triggered any number of different ways. They could be triggered based upon an event or something that happens. So I could have a record be created somewhere and now it's going to trigger functionality. Or if I really want to expand functionality, I could even look at it from a Power Apps perspective where somebody clicks on a button inside Power Apps and it's going to go out and it's going to initiate that flow that might go out and do some, some individualized situations. So now I have an app where I'm out there, I scan somebody's business card, I want to create the lead, I hit create lead, that fires a flow that now goes ahead from that custom app that I've created and now facilitates triggering and creating that item inside Dynamics 365. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you could do that. So for example, if you look at kind of the one that we have from, from this situation, this would be an example of an item that you would look at uh, from, from a build standpoint. So for example, I have a situation where somebody's going to send an email when a file is added to a Dropbox. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to authenticate to a Dropbox account. We're going to specify what specific folder inside that Dropbox account we want to monitor. So when something happens or when a file is added to that particular folder inside Dropbox, now it's going to go out and it's going to authenticate to Office 365. It's going to compose an email. So inside that email, I can specify specific situations as far as you know who I want to send it to, what the body of the email is, all of those situations. Now what's nice about Flow is Flow remembers the context of all the steps that took place prior to it. So if I'm monitoring a specific folder inside of a Dropbox and I'm adding a file to that folder, I have the ability once that file is added to that folder to use that file in the remainder part of my situation. So now I could compose an email that in the subject says we have a new file, this is the name of the file that's been added to your Dropbox. So I have the ability to remember the context of what's going to happen within those situations. And all the individual elements that would make up that file inside that Dropbox, the name of the file, um, maybe some identifiers, the path, the content type, whatever that situation is, can all be referenced. So it remembers all those individual items from the previous step. So now when you're going in and constituting building that information, you have the ability to pull that information back at some point and work through it. 
So now as we're sending that information and we're authenticating, now we can basically define what we want to do moving forward from that step. So it just provides you with a lot of flexibility and we'll show you that as we kind of build some of these individual situations moving forward. But the concepts of flow really start kind of what you see here. So there's going to be some type of trigger. Now that trigger could be any number of different situations. It could be like we saw on the previous screen where a file is added to a Dropbox folder. It could be a button that's pushed in a Microsoft Power App. It could be something that initiates from Dynamics 365, but there's something that's going to fire or trigger that flow concept to take place. Now, once that trigger takes place, now I'm going to have some conditions potentially that I'm going to evaluate. So I'm going to look at different things that would make that option up, specify what I'm looking at. So if this particular condition is true, this is the direction I want to go. So then I'm going to apply and subsequent actions that are going to execute based upon that condition being true. And then if that condition is false or if there's a different condition that's true, now I'm going to execute a different path or a different action. So when you start thinking about how flow works kind of at its core baseline, it really breaks down into what is the triggering event that's going to cause that information to take place, what is the condition that I'm trying to evaluate inside the application, and then based upon that condition, what are the actions that I want to use to go in any one of the individualized directions that are going to point me moving forward. So let's look at this in the context of the application. Now I'm in my, I'm in my Office 365 Admin Center, and if I go up into my applications, one of the options that I will see is Flow. Now the first thing that you'll have to do when you go into Flow, if you haven't already, is you, it, it is something you just have to sign up for. Um, so you'll, you'll add that to your subscription, sign up for it, it'll then bring it into your Office 365 Management Council. Once you come into here, it'll then give you some of the baseline capabilities. So you'll see an area that shows you any flows that you have created, so all of your flows that you have designed will show up in here so you can access those. Now if you're using Power Apps, and again this is something that would be done in the Power Apps course as well, Power Apps also has an option to be able to access your flows directly through the Power Apps designer so you can work with information from there. That also shows you some of the different services that you can connect to. So depending upon, there's, there's different levels of flow subscriptions. Uh, if it's a baseline subscription versus a premium subscription, there's different services that it allows you to connect to. So this is kind of an overview you would see from some of the baseline services that you could work with inside the application itself. There's also pre-designed templates. So one of the other things that's nice is as you're building these flows, you can save templates or other people can save templates and you can see what specific templates are existing. So if you want something to kind of get you up and running very quickly, you have the capabilities to do that as well. And then there's also um, a learning path. So inside the, the flow application itself, there are guided learning paths to help you kind of create your first couple of different flows inside the application and different items that you can work with from there. But at the very least, you have the ability to determine how you want to start moving forward. So when your comes time to create a flow, depending upon what it is that you want to do, you have some different options where you can create a flow basically from blank. So you could just come in here and start creating your flow from here by connecting to some of the different sources that you want to work with or I could create a flow from a template. And then within these templates, I could specify you know, what type of, of template it is that I'm looking at. Is it a featured scenario? Or I could do search templates and I could find specific templates that might relate to the functionality that I want to work with. So in this case, I could do Dynamics 365. And here are some of the different options that we would have specifically around Dynamics 365. And there's more and more of these every day in regards to the templates that are getting created. But you can see that I have a situation here where if I want to take an account that exists in uh, Dynamics 365 and I want to add it to the common data service, this would give me the capabilities to be able to do that. Or if I want to go ahead and I have something that's created inside Dynamics 365, I want to add it to a share point list or I want to bring it over into the operations module. More and more of these are kind of coming based upon what the situation is. So it's up to you to kind of define what that process is based upon what it is that you want to do. So this would give you the capabilities to 
kind of create and bridge these individual gaps based upon the, you know, whatever the specific need is from, from that situation. So these are some of your baseline options that you would be able to kind of work with. Now let's just look at one of the, the baseline ones that we have here when an object is created in Dynamics CRM or Dynamics 365, let's create a list item inside SharePoint. So this would be a very simplistic one. So what it's going to show me is what's happening within the context of that situation. So it's going to keep our, CR, our 365 data and SharePoint data in sync. So in this case, whenever an order is created in Dynamics 365, it's going to create a list item inside SharePoint and it's going to pull in information from our Dynamics 365 implementation. So I'm going to go ahead and use this template. And so then it tells me, okay, in order to use this template, you have to have connection-based uh, items that you're working with. Now, obviously, this is, I'm working with a Dynamics 365 and an Office 365 subscription. So it recognized, because I came in from the portal, who I am and what services I have available. So it's automatically gone in and seen, okay, here's the SharePoint subscription that you want to work with. Here's the Dynamics 365 subscription. If for some reason it can't pick it up, it may ask you to authenticate. So you would basically supply your Office 365 credentials. It would then authenticate you to each one of those data sources. Or if, depending upon the situation, I needed to connect to a different data source or a different Office 365 subscription or a Dynamics 365 instance, I would have the capabilities to switch the account and use different account credentials to work through those. And this is where you also have to keep in mind who is the account that you're working with to make sure that you have the appropriate credentials to connect to those individual environments. So now that I've specified the credentials or the connection information, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue. So now I'm going to specify, okay, what's going to happen within the context of, of what, what it is that I want to work with. So when a record is created, well, when a record is created where? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on my down arrow and this is going to show me all the different instances that I can connect to from a Dynamics 365 perspective based upon the login credentials that I've specified. So I'm going to say when an instance is created from my dev environment, what do I want to do from that standpoint? Now, if I hit edit, this shows me where it's pulling from. Now this particular template was based off of orders. I could switch this and I could look at it from a different entity perspective if I wanted to, if it was going to be an account or a contact or something similar to that situation, but this would give me the capabilities to determine what I wanted to do. Now I can go in and say, okay, so now I need to get a specific record that I want to work with. So again, I'm going to connect to my specific organization. And then it's going to ask me, what do I want to get? So what this is doing is this is almost doing almost like a query of the record. So it's going into that order entity. It's finding the order that was just created. So it's grabbing that based upon the identifier. And then it would allow me to go out and, and work with information from there. If there was additional items, I could go into my next scenario. If there was a secondary record, maybe a subsequent of information I wanted to pull in, this is where I could now go in and I could get the account information that would be associated with that. Because again, the order is going to be associated with a specific account record generally. I would probably want that account information to also be added into my SharePoint list. And so this is where now I'm able to not only grab the record itself, but I'm also able to grab related information from inside that record and pull that related information in so I can subsequently feed it into the item that I want to work with. Now I'm going to create the item. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look to see what specific item I want to look at. This is where I would have to specify a connection to my SharePoint site. Now in this case, if I don't know that, I could just go in and I could supply the URL for the SharePoint site that I wanted to work with from this particular scenario. And then once I connect to that particular SharePoint site, then I would have the abilities to go in and specify the specific list that I want to work with. Now we're going to do this on a larger scale here in a few minutes as well, but this gives you kind of the idea or the baseline procedures on how you can build this information very quickly. Once I've connected to the SharePoint site, now it's going to go ahead, build the list, and initiate that process once I choose Create Flow. 
Now, once you've gone in and connected to your, your individual data sources, and remember, you'll need to supply connection information inside your adapter. Now there's going to be specific triggers that you can define. And from a Dynamics 365 perspective, there's a few different triggers that you have. Right now, most of your triggers are really looking at more of your customer engagement type applications. So sales, service, those types of situations. So there's going to be triggers really based upon when a record is created, when a record is deleted, and when a record is updated. Those are the three baseline triggers that you're going to see from inside the context of the application today. There are not necessarily any triggers at this point from a Dynamics 365 for operations, but as you saw, there are more and more operations options being added into this. So in the very near future, and really daily, you're starting to see more and more triggers and more and more options get added into Microsoft Flow. So if you're not seeing a specific triggered methodology that you're expecting, you know, just be patient. At some point in time, it will be there because they're adding much more of those. But the, the triggers are important because that's that's what's going to initiate the functionality inside the application, and that's what's going to make sure that it's pulling in appropriate intervals to ensure that that information is going to initiate that process based upon the connections that you've defined. Another scenario that you have to look at is what do you want to do? So from a Dynamics 365 perspective, there's a lot of different actions that can be initiated from within the context of the flow. And I think that's the other thing that's real important to remember is, you know, we talked about triggering specific functionality. When you're looking at triggering functionality, the triggering functionality is, is a really limited to, you know, item is created, updated, deleted types of situations. The actual engagement actions or the actions that you're going to be doing from inside the application, there's a lot more of those based upon what the specific module is that you're working with. So let's first look at it from kind of a Dynamics 365 engagement perspective. So this would be like your sales and your customer service type scenarios. You can obviously create records. So I'm going to take something that's going to initiate from somewhere else. I'm going to create the record inside the application. Now maybe the other option that I need to do is maybe I just need to list a bunch of records based upon a different scenario. Um, this would provide me some of my querying capabilities as well. I have a list option where I can basically choose the entity that I want to work with and then I can list specific records based upon those options. I could delete records or I could get a record. We saw that even with some of the templated options that we're working with where I wanted to go out and after the record's created, I want to get the record that we just created. I also want to go out and get a related record that's associated with that, so I can then go out and do something else inside the application. And then ultimately, I could update that record as well. Now, from an operations standpoint, I have the same type of situations, but I also can get a list of entities um, in, in, in addition to that. So if there's a specific list of entities that I want to pull in from an operations perspective, I can do that. And then from a financial standpoint, I also have the ability to get different item types because based upon the, the financial scenario that I'm working with, there's different item types that I could constitute or build from that baseline procedure. Now, once I've built this, and you saw this a little bit already, you can go out and you can build your own templates. So if you're looking at different scenarios that inside your organization might be beneficial, you do have the ability to be able to go out and build those templates out. Now, the other thing is, is once those templates have been created, you can share that with those templates out pretty much with anyone in the public at that point, there will be an option very shortly that will allow you to lock down specific templates by company so you could only share them out with individual scenarios around your company. Right now it's more publicized or public based templates, but again it gives you a lot of options to be able to reuse this functionality or at the very least build kind of a, a starting container point that other people could use moving forward. So how does this all work when you start thinking about the overall big picture from a Dynamics 365's perspective? Well, as we already know, because we've talked about it in previous modules and, and, and it's been talked about in other courses, obviously Dynamics 365 has its own 
business process options. When you start talking about business rules, you start talking about dialogues, you start talking about Dynamics 365 workflows. So think about how these two items could almost tag team each other a little bit. So if you think about from a Dynamics 365 workflow perspective, let's just look at a very common one that you would see. So a case is gonna be created. So you have a help desk technician who's gonna go into the application and they're gonna create a case. I'm gonna have a Dynamics 365 workflow that's going to get triggered automatically when that case is created. Created. Now, once that case is created, one of the first things that it's going to do at that point is it's going to create a follow-up task. And it's going to say, okay, in three days or however length of time that we've maybe specified based upon an SLA that's associated with that, it's going to create a follow-up task to remind me to follow up with this customer in X number of days. After I'm at, in addition to that, it's also going to go out and it's going to update the account information. Maybe I have some specific information that I need to have updated on the account. It's going to go into that account. It's going to update the account information with whatever subsequent information I may have captured from the case that's relevant. Now, in a normal situation, I'm just going to sit there and I'm going to wait for that case to be resolved. And once that case is resolved, now depending upon how it was resolved, I might have a couple of different actions. If it was resolved with an actual true status of resolved, now maybe I have the voice of the customer solution installed and I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna send a survey out that's going to interact with that customer and just ask them about how their experience was. If for some reason I can't resolve that case, maybe the technician can't resolve that case, they're going to escalate it. And so now maybe they've changed the status of that case to be more of a resolve escalated option and now if I have something like field service, it's going to go out and create a work order that's now going to go out and get dispatched out and scheduled to, to escalate that process. You know, that's a very typical process when you think about it within the grand scheme of, of, of Dynamics 365. But now let's look at it from a flow perspective. So maybe I want to initiate that case being created from a file or something added to a Dropbox folder. So now I'm going to have a situation that flow is going to trigger some functionality when a file is added to a Dropbox folder. Once it's added to a Dropbox folder, it's going to go out and get the information. It's going to extrapolate some specific pieces of information from that Dropbox folder, and it's going to create that case inside Dynamics 365. Once that case has been created inside Dynamics 365, now it's going to trigger that Dynamics 365 workflow, and it's going to go through its standardized process where it's then going to you know, send that information across and do whatever it needs to do. Now from there, once it's done and I'm sending out that survey or whatever the situation is, I could wait for that item to be updated within that context and now I have it go back into my flow and now within that flow, maybe it's going to initiate some type of invoicing situation where it's going to generate an invoice maybe in a third party area, maybe a list or something like that. Then it's gonna go out, it's gonna send that invoice back into Dynamics 365 uh, financials to be able to be processed and invoiced from that standpoint. And if there was any issues or anything that needed to happen, you know, be taken place within that scenario, maybe I also have it send out SMS messages, or maybe I even have it go out and process a return file. So now maybe something has been returned within that situation. I'm going to process that return product that's going to come into the application, and then I'm going to send a follow-up email. So now I really have this entire consumption model that allows me to build this across the board. I'm going to take something that's going to initiate from a third-party application. I'm going to feed it into my application or my Dynamics 365, and then from from there, I'm going to go ahead and initiate kind of that entire process. So let's look at this and let's create kind of just a, a simplistic area where we're kind of bringing both of those items together. So I'm going to go into flow and I'm just going to initiate creation of an account record from a SharePoint list. And then once that account is created, I'm going to obviously have it kick off a Dynamics 365 workflow. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to just create from template. And I'm going to initiate this based upon something being created in SharePoint. So I'm going to go into and just type SharePoint. Here I can see that I've got a couple of different options. The one that I'm looking for um, in regards to this option is when something is created inside SharePoint, I want to create a new Dynamics 365 record. So I'm going to click on that template. It's going to tell me kind of what's taking place. I'm going to go ahead and use this template. It's going to ask me for my connection information. I'm authenticated to SharePoint. I'm authenticated to Dynamics 365. I'm going to click on Continue. 
I'll specify the SharePoint URL I want to use. So in this case, I'll just pick kind of my standard SharePoint site. I already have a list that I'm using for Dynamic CRM accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Dynamic CRM accounts. And now I'm going to create a new record inside Dynamics 365. So I'm going to click to here. I'm going to pick the organization I want to work with. And I'm going to pick the entity that I want to create. So in this case, I'll give it just a sec to load up my entities. Choose accounts. It'll refresh my information on my account scenario. And now I can do some additional stuff from here. So what it's gone in here now is it's gone in and it said, okay, I need the account name. That's the first and foremost that I need to capture in order to be able to facilitate doing something with this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click in the account name field and it's going to ask me, okay, well, what do you want to grab? So here's some different options that I have based upon things that were created inside that application. So I want the account name. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on account name. And this is going to populate the account name within the application based upon what was coming directly from the SharePoint list when that record was created inside SharePoint. If I have additional content that I want to be able to, you know, to, to work with and, and kind of build, I do have the abilities to work with additional fields as I'm going through this as well. So depending upon what the situation is, I've got multiple options that I can kind of bring into this scenario if I want to. If I ever need to change connections, I can change connections. And then if I want to work with kind of additional factors or additional items uh, from there, I certainly could. Now, the other option that I have when I start going through this situation is I could go in and I could add additional steps. And so this would give me the capabilities if I wanted to maybe add a new action or a new condition, I could specify the additional items that I wanted to bring in from that particular option. Now, in this case, I don't necessarily have any additional options, but this is where I could add you know, different scopes. I could add different options based upon that situation. Now, in this case, I'm going to just do a very simplistic one. I'm just going to create it based upon the account name and have the account name get generated inside the application. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create flow. This is going to generate my flow. I'm going to be basically, once this will get rolling, this will create it. It takes a few minutes depending upon the, what it is that you're trying to work with. It'll then let me know that it's been created and that it's running. And then I would have the capabilities to kind of check the status and see you know, when things ran and how things had worked from that perspective moving forward. But this would now give me the capabilities to uh, facilitate that. So now let's go back into Dynamics 365. So now if I go back into Dynamics 365 and I come into here, now I can go into my processes. And this is where I would just create my standard process. So now I want to have some type of new workflow or item that's going to take place based upon that situation. So I'm going to come into here and I'm going to create a new process. I'm going to call this sample flow process. And now I'm just going to build this like I would build any other type of situation. When the, at an organization level, when an account is created, what do I want to do? I want to create a new task. So I'm going to create a record. I'm going to create a task. And then I'm going to just populate the information from my task. So we'll call this sample task. and then save and close. Now, think about this on a larger scale or a larger scope. Now, I could actually go in and if I chose to, I could have populated the account with a variety of different fields from the SharePoint list. Once that information had been populated from the SharePoint list, I could now come into this situation, have all of that information since it's been populated be used to generate the task. Or more specifically, maybe I now, based upon what it is, maybe this account needs to be approved or maybe this account needs to be flagged for approval from a managerial standpoint. Now I could come in and I could use a custom action with those input parameters that we talked about to capture a variety of different input parameters that would now fire a custom action maybe that was based off of a real-time workflow. Once this record is updated, now maybe I have another flow that triggers based upon that functionality and goes out and does something else 
based upon that. And now I've got that entire kind of process. So I've initiated the creation of the record through a flow into Dynamics 365. I've initiated some type of approval process within the context of the application. I've waited for that approval process to take place. I've updated the record based upon a specific situation. Situation. I've looked for a content. Once I've got the content, I've now passed that content into another scenario that has now further streamlined this integration between the two items. This is a great mechanism that you can use to, to provide an extra layer of flexibility across the board when you start talking about building connected integrated applications that all talk to each other. When you're looking to design solutions, it's important to think about you know, not only how that solution is going to function inside Dynamics 365, but what are the circumstances or what are the other areas outside of the application that may have some type of direct impact on what you're doing inside your Dynamics 365 application. Is this, a, is this a record or is this information something that requires approval from people who aren't necessarily Dynamics 365 users? Um, am I allowing people to pull information from an external data source like Twitter or SharePoint or Dropbox or some other element that needs to be brought into this? And if so, as that item is created and I'm, and I'm building that process to bring it into Dynamics 365, what specific information do I need to, in order to capture that. Because ultimately what you're trying to do is to build very robust end-to-end -end solutions that not only automate the process within Dynamics 365, but automate the, the entire process specifically when you have other applications involved. And that's where an application like Flow can come into play. It gives you that visual designer that allows you to build that automation process that can span multiple systems and multiple boundaries. The big key advantage here is you don't necessarily have to use code. You can build the integration process very simplistically. Now, one of the things we didn't necessarily talk about in the context of this course, but I'll at least mention at this point is on-premise scenarios. Um, there is a concept of gateways where you can create gateways to on-premise environments so you can also connect to services that are running on-premises as well. So you do have the capabilities to not only work with cloud-based applications as part of this flow procedure, but also to work with on-premise deployments as well. It is basically a functionality that's built off of what are called Microsoft Azure Logic Apps, but instead of having a very complex kind of coded situation, it's a much more simplified experience. So you don't necessarily have to be, like I said, a developer to, to build these options. But the big thing that I tell people is, you know, think of Flow not necessarily as a replacement for what it is that you want to do inside Dynamics 365 from a workflow perspective, but think about it as a tool that you can use to complement that already existing functionality functionality I, as a tool that you can use to now build triggers and functionality that's going to span multiple applications when you have that need to integrate those different applications at different levels and then also constitute and trigger specific functionality inside the application.